today I've got some fun dinners to show you guys. I'm actually going to be making some homemade chilaquiles. I'm also making some burgers on the grill with baked beans and twice baked potatoes and then some bourbon chicken. So let's get started. All right, so we're making bourbon chicken. I think this sounds so delicious and I'm really excited to try it. So I've got my chicken thighs. These are boneless, skinless chicken thighs. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these up into cubes and um, we'll use those for the recipe. I've got some apple cider vinegar, garlic and ginger paste, sesame oil, soy sauce, uh, one tablespoon of butter, some brown sugar, uh, some bourbon. This is a quarter cup of bourbon chicken broth, hoisin sauce, honey, and ketchup. Okay, so I'm just gonna trim a little bit of the fat off of this. I'm not gonna be super um, picky about it, just the big chunks, and then cut it into about one, one, one and a half inch pieces. I'm gonna go ahead and season this. You could just use salt, but I'm gonna use this Goya adobo. I've really been liking seasoning my pork and chicken with it. I just think it gives it a great flavor. So I've got the Instant Pot on saute, and I have my sesame oil and my butter in there. I'm gonna go ahead and add the chicken pieces. Okay, so the chicken is mostly cooked. I'm gonna add the bourbon, and about one teaspoon of ginger, about a tablespoon of garlic. Okay, so I'm gonna add the broth and the vinegar, soy sauce, and the brown sugar. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the Instant Pot off of the saute function, and then we just need to cook this on high pressure for four minutes. One thing I forgot to mention that you need for this recipe is cornstarch. This is used a lot in Instant Pot cooking, kind of at the end to thicken the sauce or the gravy. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix two tablespoons of this with two tablespoons of cold water. So the chicken is done. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do a pressure release. I put this back on the saute function and we're gonna go ahead and add the remainder of the ingredients. So quarter cup of ketchup, two tablespoons of honey, and then two tablespoons of hoisin sauce. Hoisin sauce? Poison with an H. Oh. Okay, we're gonna stir this together and bring it up to a simmer. I will say it smells really good. All right, then the last step is just to add the cornstarch mixture, and sometimes I use some of the sauce to kind of rinse out the bowl a little bit. And that's basically it. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this back to keep warm so it doesn't burn. I'm gonna let it cool off a little bit and then we'll give it a taste and see if it needs, the sauce needs adjusting. Okay, I just tasted this. Really, really good. Recommend this recipe, it's delicious. Okay, so I cooked up some rice and I'll slice up some green onions. I'll show you what it looks like plated up. Okay, so here's how this turned out. Super delicious. I definitely recommend this recipe. I'll have it linked down below. I did just garnish it with some green onions and have some plain white rice that I cooked in the Instant Pot. Yum. So you guys know I love to cook at home, but every so often, probably twice a month, my husband and I go out for dinner together and we also do drinks. And let's face it, after a night of drinks, I don't bounce back the next day like I used to because I'm pushing 40. That is why I'm super excited that Z-Biotics is sponsoring today's video, so thank you to them. If you guys aren't familiar with Z-Biotics, that's okay. I wasn't either at first, but I highly, highly recommend it after trying it several times, and here is why. Z-Biotics Pre-Alcohol Probiotic is actually the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was actually invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking, and here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct product in your gut and it's actually this byproduct not dehydration that's to blame for feeling rough the next day. Zbiotics produces an enzyme to help break this byproduct down and it's designed to work like your liver but it works in your gut where you need it the most. Just remember to drink Zbiotics before drinking alcohol. Make sure you please drink responsibly and get a good night's sleep and you will feel your best in the morning. The first time I tried Zbiotics was uh, during a date night. My husband and I went to a brewery and then we went out for dinner. 
I just made sure to hydrate with water when we got home. I got a good night's sleep and I was amazed at how good I felt the next day. I've tried it several times since then and from personal experience, I highly, highly recommend it. If you guys want to try out Z-Biotics for yourself, highly recommend them for your summertime barbecues, weddings, and vacations because none of us have time to be having a bad day the next day feeling like crap just because we had some drinks. So you can go to zbiotics.com slash Jen Chapin, or you can actually scan the QR code on the screen right now, and you're going to get 15% off your first order when you use code Jen Chapin at checkout. You can also sign up for a subscription using my code so you can stay prepared no matter the time or occasion. Zbiotics is backed with a 100% money back guarantee. So if you're unsatisfied for any reason, they will refund your money, no questions asked. Remember to head to zbiotics.com slash Jen Chapin and use the code Jen Chapin at checkout for 15% off. And thank you again to Zbiotics for sponsoring this video. Okay, so this was a weekend breakfast and I'm gonna show you guys how I make chilaquiles with a side of bacon. You could also make this for dinner if you wanted to. You can see I put my bacon in the oven so I could free up the stove top. I just quartered up some corn tortillas and half an onion. And for the tortillas, I heated up some vegetable oil and I just have that over medium high heat in a skillet. Basically, you just want to crisp up the tortilla chips and drain them on a paper towel. For the tomato sauce, I'm adding diced tomatoes, chicken broth, and some onion and some different spices to the blender. And this recipe is actually out of my cookbook. So if you don't have my cookbook, you can buy it on Amazon. I'll link it down below. It has this recipe in it. Basically, you blend all of the ingredients for the sauce. There's also some spices in there. You can add jalapeno if you want. And then you pour it into the skillet that you fried up the tortillas in. Wipe it out first, add a little bit of oil, and then you just simmer that. I normally serve it with eggs on top. Adam likes the sunny side up eggs or the over easy eggs. And then once the tortilla chips are a little bit cool and you can salt them, um, go ahead and put some of them back into the tomato broth. And you might think this would be soggy and obviously the longer it sits, it will get soggy. But if you eat it right away, like if you toss the chips in the sauce and eat it right away, it's definitely not soggy. So I went ahead and served that with eggs on the top, some sour cream, diced onion and cilantro and some bacon on the side. And my kids are not super crazy about these. So it was super easy to whip up some breakfast tacos <laughs> on the side to serve to them. I just put some of the bacon and eggs and cheese in there. Okay, so this was a night when I decided I wanted to grill out, but then I also had some potatoes on hand that I could use. So I just baked up a bunch of russet potatoes in the oven. How I do this is I just rub them with a little bit of vegetable oil. I season them with kosher salt, poke holes in them, and then I bake them at 400 for about an hour. It obviously depends on the size of the potatoes, but then once they're done and cool enough to handle, you can go ahead and have them and you wanna just scoop out the potato flesh into a bowl. I mixed some low calorie yogurt margarine spread in there. I'm trying to make these a little bit lighter than the traditional twice baked potatoes. Um, just mash that up, add some salt and pepper and seasonings to your taste. You can add sour cream, but again, I'm trying to keep this recipe a little bit lighter. So I'm using 0% Greek yogurt and then um, just go ahead and combine that. And obviously at this point, you can kind of add whatever you want. So you obviously can add bacon and cheese, which is the more traditional route. That's what I'm doing. I'm just shredding, shredding up some Colby Jack cheese that I had in the uh, refrigerator. Of course, I go. have to give my little sit. bite. You sit. Sit. Good boy. And yes, I did wash my hands. Everyone always asks me that. <laughs> so I put some of the shredded cheese into the potato mixture to give it some flavor, but then I'm also gonna reserve some of the shredded cheese for the top of the potatoes. So you just want to scoop some of that filling back into the potato skins. And when you scoop the filling out, you do wanna leave a little bit of a shell and some of the flesh intact so that they don't fall apart. Put them on a foil lined baking tray and then I added some extra cheese on the top. Um, I also added some bacon bits as well. These are just bacon bits I had in the refrigerator. And then at the end, I will definitely add some green onions to garnish. For the burgers, I like to make these uh, using waxed paper so I can flatten them out and so they're even and they cook 
all at the same time on the grill. I'm just gonna season these super simply. This is just 80-20 ground beef. It was a little bit fatty and it did flare up on the grill a little bit. So I think 90-10 or 85-15 would probably be better. Um, but I did grill those up, season them with Lowry seasoning salt. Here are my beans. I just cooked a can of uh, baked beans and then we had our twice baked potatoes and then i went ahead and grilled up the burgers along with some hot dogs because my daughter is not super crazy about burgers but we have all of our toppings here tomatoes pickles ketchup onion mustard and mayo and this was like the perfect summer supper so next up we're making a super easy dinner and you guys know I love a good convenience food dinner. I've got some orange chicken and some General Tao's chicken out of the freezer along with some rice and a bag of broccoli that I got in the produce section. This is a perfect dinner. Why? Because it takes like 15 minutes to put together and no one complains about it. That's a win in my book. So if you haven't tried these real good foods, um, different chicken nugget things yet, I highly recommend them. They taste like real chicken. They taste kind of close to Chick-fil-A. Um, if I, you know, if I had to compare them to something, but then my kids like the orange chicken. So I went ahead and put that out on a baking tray as well. So we're gonna have the orange chicken and the general Tao's chicken. And then obviously with the sauce, you just want to put that into a bowl and cover it up with uh, hot water. And uh, you know what, if this helps keep you from getting takeout or eating out, then it's a win <laughs> in my book. For the broccoli, I know you can steam it in the bag, but I like to add a little bit of butter and salt and pepper to it. So I normally put it in a bowl and microwave it. What I'll do is I'll cut the florets up a little bit just to make sure um, that they're not super large and that they all cook evenly. I'll put some water in the bottom of the bowl, put a lid on it, add some salt, and I cook that for about six minutes in the microwave and it's usually about perfect. I'm also gonna make some dumplings on the side. I'm using my always pan. I personally do not recommend this pan for anything other than steaming things. The nonstick on it does not really work well at all. And if you guys haven't tried these dumplings, they're so good, I'll link them down down below but anyway I'm gonna steam these up for about 15 minutes while everything else cooks and then uh, once the chicken is done I do like to cook it a little bit longer than it says because I like to make sure that it's super crispy you could also cook this in the air fryer but since I was cooking two batches I just went ahead and did it on a sheet tray and I have parchment paper lining the sheet tray so I'm able to just kind of pour the sauce on there and toss everything together so it does make it a little bit more uh, easy and mess free to clean up but this is what we had for dinner on this night yes on paper plates chicken either orange or general Tao's uh, rice dumplings and some broccoli don't forget to check out zbiotics i've got that 15 percent coupon down below so make sure you check that out thanks for watching and if you want another video to watch click here